this is a peak flow meter and we're going to take a measurement. Okay, Emma, so what I need you to do for this test is to take a nice big deep breath in and a nice sharp blow, keeping the meter straight and not touching your fingers on the dial here. Okay, bring it on time. Lovely, thank you. So that was 4.20. Okay, we're going to do another one, we're going to do best of three. Exactly the same again. <sighs> Duper. 440. And last one, exactly the same. <sighs> Super. 450. Okay, so we'll compare these peak flows to previous peak flows if we've got any. And if needs be, we'll book an appointment with the GP to discuss further. Um, by recording your peak flow, we can compare it to times when you pour it, and that will give us an idea if treatment needs changing, or we need to monitor your peak flow closer. We've just seen Nurse Emma perform three peak flow readings using a meter. Here is a graph which illustrates the different curves for men and women. The top graph here, the top lines here, are for men. And here are the heights. And the bottom one is for women with their heights. On this side, we have the peak flow readings. And at the bottom, we have age. And although it goes up to 15, we do know that peak flow readings can be, take, uh, can be undertaken on children under the age of 15. With Nurse Mary, let's have a look at where she would be on this graph. We know that she's 42 years of age, which would be around this point, And we know her height is 153 centimetres. The bottom line here is 152. So if we went to this line, the normal for her would be around this point here. About there. But we know from the readings that uh, Nurse uh, Emma has provided that her best result was 450. So in fact, she is breathing around this level, which is, uh, which is very good, which would concur with her spirometry readings that she provided earlier in the previous clip. Now, when looking at a patient with asthma, what we would do is undertake three peak flow readings um, and plot the best one on the graph depending on their height and their age and the best reading they've got. Following that, we can undertake a reversibility test using a blue inhaler with a spacer. And once they provide us the second reading, if the second reading is 15% better than the first reading, then it's likely that they have asthma. And this has shown that they would also have reversibility in response to the blue inhaler. If the second test is not as much as 15%, it is less than 15%, then you need to consider other possible causes for the chest problem because it's possible that this may not be asthma. Peak flow meters are quite a useful tool. They are available on prescription from your GP and they are a device that you can take home. In newly uh, presenting patients, it is useful where asthma is suspected to provide a peak flow meter and ask them to take readings while they're at home. It's useful in this situation to ask the patient to take a peak flow reading when they awake in the morning, before they use a blue inhaler if they're trialing an inhaler, after they've used the blue inhaler, and before they go to bed. If they are not using an inhaler, it is still useful to get readings when they awake in the morning and uh, when they go to sleep at night. If they're taking peak flow readings during the day, it's not uncommon to, common to find what we call a diurnal variation, which means that the peak, peak flow readings vary during the day. Now, if we have a look at this, it would look something similar to this. So if we draw a line, a graph, 
and we've got peak flow readings on this side and let's say in this case it goes from 300 up to 400 and here we're plotting the days so we've got day 1 here day 2 day 3 day 4 and day 5 now if a patient with asthma who uh, was prescribed a peak flow meter started taking their peak flow readings what we would tend to find is that on the first day around 7 o'clock in the morning they'd have quite a low reading but by midday the reading goes up now during the day this will start to gradually drop again to about 7 o'clock the following morning which is the early morning dip and the pattern seen would be similar to this over each day with the dips in the early morning which gradually improve as the morning uh, develops only to gradually start dropping again to the lowest points here which are early in the morning now to plot this you can get um, a number of different pieces of literature from uh, a national asthma organization and if you went onto their website which is asthma dot org dot uk you will be able to find peak flow diaries as well as action plans for those who have uh, diagnosed asthma condition in terms of how to manage it and how to record all your various uh, data so it's quite a useful uh, website to go on to um, take a peak, peak flow um, chart these are also provided with a peak flow meter when you get it from the pharmacy but uh, start plotting your peak flow, peak flow readings and see if you can develop something similar to this if that's the case you do need to go and see your GP um, and take a trial of medication and see if that improves the condition and gets rid of uh, these low dips early in the mornings finally let's have a look at what happens with a patient who has asthma and is having um, an exacerbation what happens to their uh, peak flow readings well if we draw another graph here and let's say in this case we're starting with a peak flow reading around 50 and we'll go up to 250 so these are the peak flow readings and here again we've got days Got one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, in this case, in this example, we'll assume that this patient's best peak flow reading when they're well is 320 liters per minute. So, what we'll find early um, at the beginning of their exacerbation is that their airflow is pretty poor and because it's pretty poor their peak flow readings will be down at this level and again in the early morning period they'll be getting the dips like uh, we, we saw in the previous uh, previous diagram but as they start taking the treatment what you'll find is that the peak flow readings improve and the dips are not as bad or as low early in the morning and as the treatment carries on they will still get their diurnal, diurnal variation but their symptoms and their readings start to improve heading towards what is normal so here we've still got the early morning dips which could be around five six seven o'clock in the morning 
but you can see that with medication this patient's uh, performance with the peak flow readings is gradually improving and hopefully within a couple of weeks once they've fully result, uh, recovered their peak flow reading should be up here again somewhere at 300 at 320 liters per minute now this is the reason why it is quite useful if you can get a peak flow reading when you are in the best state of health or the most stable state of health either from the graph or from your own performance uh, because this will give the doctor and the nurse an indication of how poorly you are when you take a peak flow reading and when we can compare it with your best result. So do carry on uh, using your peak flow readings or peak flow meters to monitor your asthma uh, and uh, hopefully it will provide a useful tool to keep an eye on the state of your condition. You should now be able to discuss the results of your spirometry and peak flow recordings with your GP or practice nurse. Later in this series, we will explore the benefits of peak flow readings in the management of your asthma at home. Let's now move on to session three on the different therapies available to manage your asthma.